So picture this. The year is 1982, or 83, or 84, 85, or 86, and you are Jack Gill, right? So where are you during those years? Well, you're probably on the set of Knight Rider getting ready to film some stunts, right? You're either doing some jumps, maybe you're doing some 360s, some high speed chases, reverse 180s, I don't know. But have you ever thought about how you're going to know if the car you're driving is overheating or has an oil pressure issue or things like that, right? Because remember, this was California, and a lot of times they filmed in the summertime, and it was regularly 100 degrees outside. So how could they ensure that the Knight Rider Trans Ams were not going to overheat? Well, I'm going to share that secret with you today, if you care. This is kind of one of the more obscure videos, but I think it's something you guys will appreciate. So today, we'll cover just exactly how all of those drivers of the Knight Rider cars back in the day knew the vitals of the Trans Ams, right? There was usually a dash in there, a Knight Rider dash. So how did they know how the cars were performing? We'll reveal that to you after this. Okay, so a little backstory on this. So not all of the Knight Rider cars had a full Knight Rider dash in them. And we've talked about that before on the channel. Um, obviously the Hero car did. It had the Knight Rider dash, it had all the electronics on it. None of the electronics actually displayed the readings of the, the Trans Am that they were in, right? They, the electronics worked to a degree. There was someone you know, off camera in the hero car that can control knobs and and switches to make the dash do different things, but none of it was ever um, tied into the actual Trans Am. Things like uh, oil pressure, voltmeter, uh, coolant temperature, none of that stuff was. So all of the stock gauges were either covered or they were removed completely. And uh, that was the case for a number of the Knight Rider cars. The right-hand blind drive car didn't have the... Um, the full Knight Rider dash in it, but all the gauges were removed from it. And a number of other cars. Some of the stunt cars did just kind of have a shell on top that made it look like the Knight Rider dash, but the stock gauges were still there. So obviously they could use those gauges. But how did they, how did they handle those cars where the stock gauges were either covered or removed completely? We're gonna reveal that to you right now. It was by this, auxiliary gauges. And now you've seen auxiliary gauges similar to this in many different, um, you know, hot rods and custom cars and all that stuff, or even maybe old cars that didn't necessarily have um, all of these gauges. Maybe they just had dummy lights and someone would install these under the dash. So that's exactly what they did for some of those Knight Rider cars. Now, what you're looking at here is an exact recreation of the gauge pods that would they would put in those Knight Rider cars. Um, and we know that because out of the five surviving cars, one, two, three of them still have their gauges uh, in there. So with that, we were able to uh, you know, source the original uh, gauges and the bezel and the mounting and all that stuff. So this is an exact recreation. Um, so what are we what are we looking at here, right? Well, we've got uh, they're all Stuart Warner gauges, and they're these are all new old stock. You can still find them fairly easily on eBay. But um, we've got a water temperature gauge, oil pressure, and voltmeter. And the way this worked is this would actually get installed in the center console of the stock, you know, a stock Trans Am center console. Now I don't have one particularly handy right now, but 
what you know in the center console there's the glove box door that opens right between the two seats you'd open the, the glove box door and it would be mounted like th like this right so if i'm the driver right i'm driving here's my steering wheel the gauges would be right down here and they would be mounted screwed into the top of that you know you'd open the lid and then right inside there this would be screwed in so you could easily see um, the different gauges and you know you've got the wiring harness and then we've got the oil pressure sender and then we've got the coolant sender so those would get um, installed in the engine bay in their appropriate locations and uh, from there the stunt team could control or could uh, monitor all of the vital gauges for that Trans Am so that's how they did it in, in a nutshell so pretty cool huh Okay, well that was short and sweet. Um, now you guys know, and you know, if you wanna add this to your own replica, well, get looking on eBay. Like I said, these are fairly readily available and uh, you could build your own gauge cluster, but um, I guess with uh, modern Knight Rider electronics, that's all built into the actual electronics you put in the dash, the, so you probably wouldn't need these. But just another um, neat kind of behind the scenes, something you really never see on um, just how they how they did that. So I'm sure it's something probably none of you have ever really thought about, but now you're thinking about it, right? So let me know, do you wanna, do you want me to share other interesting little details like this in these short little informational videos? Let me know in the comments below and I'm sure I can come up with other stuff very similar to this. So as always, appreciate your time. More content coming very soon. Some really good stuff you're not gonna wanna miss. Um, Thanks. We'll talk to you soon.